Hey guys, it's Rudel here, and this is my first uh, YouTube Let's Play slash walkthrough video, so I'm really excited for this. Um, today we're going to be playing The Lord of the Rings, The Battle of Middle-earth 2, and I think it should be said I'm playing on the 360 version of this game. Now, it was ported from the PC, and while in my opinion it is the best game, or the best RTS on the 360, uh, as far as ports are concerned, they're not that impressive. The frame rate for one is terrible, but... I think the frame rate issues don't come across in the in capture the card, so I think you guys won't have to put up with it. It, it should be fine. Middle Earth but on the enough of me talking, let's enjoy this lovely looking cutscene with a Nazgul running up the screen. Oh my god! The free peoples are under threat from Sauron, the Lord of the Rings, who prepares his vast armies for war. At this late hour, the leaders of elves, dwarves, and men come together at the Council of Elrond to decide their next move. Yeah, there goes the Fellowship. After the fellowship and, uh, and in case you didn't know, in the first Battle for Middle Earth game, you did play as the Fellowship. But as you can see here, this one is going to focus on the elves and the dwarves in the north, and uh, combating Sauron's forces in the north. Now, for an RTS, when this game was released, the graphics are actually not half bad. I do like the art style they've used in this game. It's not completely photogenic, but it is it is quite nice to look at. Um, this game has two campaigns. It's got the good campaign and the evil campaign. Uh, like all good people, we're going to be starting with the good campaign. And, uh... As you can see that I just cut out the loading screen because the loading screens can take up to like 25 seconds and it's not fun to look at loading screens when you're just watching this so I, I cut them out. Until now this ancient city has been spared from the winds of war. <laughs> I always think Glorfindel's reaction to, the go to that one goblin is funny. Uh, and then he sees the whole horde arriving, that's great. Glorfindel must go to the house of Elrond and inform the Lord of the approaching goblins. The enemy is close! The enemy! Attack! The enemy is upon us! Now, like most games, the first level eases you into the game. It doesn't... it's not too challenging, it just introduces you to the uh, core mechanics of the game. Uh, we're in Rivendell for this first game and we have to get to the house of Elrond. Get, I'll just get these elves to attack here. Yeah, look at them go. They slaughter those goblins. They're no match for elves. Uh, now, with the, the main problem with uh, bringing RTSs to the console is obviously replacing the mouse and keyboard functionality and trying to map the buttons to the console. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they did a great job with this game. Uh, they basically implemented a command wheel, which... Uh, allows you to do everything. It's very intuitive. It's and it's sort of uh, it's set a set a template for future RTSs. Uh, if you look at when Command and Conquer 3 was released on the console, they used a very similar approach, almost identical, and it worked brilliantly. So I think the way they've done the controls in this game has been extremely beneficial uh, to people that wanted to bring RTSs to consoles. Uh, except. <laughs> <laughs> Except Halo Wars, they went in a completely different direction, and, and well, we don't need to say what happened about that game, it kind of failed. Um, yeah, so we're just taking care of these goblins along the uh, southern side of Rivendell. And you can see here, we've got a wide variety of powers, and uh, I just chose Heal, because out of those first tier powers, Heal is probably the most useful. It, uh, especially at bailing your heroes out when they're in trouble. Now, uh, those those powers are bought with power points, and power points are um, 
acquired through killing uh, enemies. Now, they they were smart enough, the developers of this game were smart enough to set a cap on the amount of points you can get per level. So you can't uh, just sit and grind away and unlock all the powers in the first level. Now this is good and bad. Good because uh, there is still a sense of progression, you don't get everything on the first level. I, li I like how all the elves are just commenting on Glorfindel's arrival. How he's just come to save them all. I mean, he does live here. It's <laughs> he shouldn't be commended for helping out. Uh. Now the base units for the elves. Elves are n in this game are known for being primarily defenders. They have great defensive capabilities, not so great with the attack. But the Lorian warriors, which are the units I'm using uh, with Glorfindel here, they're actually rather strong. They can pack a punch. They can go toe to well, not toe to toe, but they can put up a good fight against uh, dwarven guardians, which are the uh, basic inventory for the dwarves. Uh, now we've made it to the gates of uh, of Rivendell, which was the objective, and I like how there's a big shiny light to clearly mark out where the objectives is, like m more evidence of it just easing you into the game, just holding your hand through this first level, and. Um, we just saw the House of Elrond, that's where Elrond lives, obviously. And if we check, yeah, just check the objectors. Apparently Elrond doesn't know there's, <laughs> there's goblins on his doorstep. We have to go warn him. That's right. And to the left of Elrond is Gloin. It's actually Gimli's father. Now, around this time, Gimli, or Gloin, rather, is actually, he should be quite a frail old dwarf. He should have a lot of grey hair. But in this game they decide to revitalize him. They decide to make him a lot younger looking. Probably the way he looked in The Hobbit. And um, it, it doesn't bother me. It's not realistic but hey it's a, it's a fantasy game. I don't think it, that should be the primary focus. Now our objective here is to prepare for the Golden Invasion. And we were allowed to uh, requisition uh, Lorian warriors from the barracks, and in this level we won't have to focus on an economy. We get a crap ton of resources to use, and uh, we're just gonna use that to make a whole bunch of Lorian warriors. And uh, it doesn't give you a whole lot of variety in this first level. You get Lorian warriors, you get a few other elven units, but nothing that really shows off the uh, variety of this game. Now there's another barracks here, and if I can remember correctly, they will attack from the west or to the left of the screen. So I think this barracks here is probably the one we should uh, build all our units from. Leave. I think I should probably close the gate. I think that would be a good idea. <laughs> we don't want to give them a front door invitation. There they are! Here comes the whore! Jesus Christ! Now, the, one, the thing you should know with goblins is that they have strength in numbers, but without the strength. They have numbers, pretty much. Um, as you can see here, these elves are severely outnumbered, but with three heroes, especially Elrond, who's rather powerful, uh, it won't take long for those goblins to die. Now, what I like about this game is how great the uh, combat is in this game, and just, just look how beautiful that looks. You have these two huge, well not, not huge, but you have these two armies engaging one another, and my Lorians have just been created from the barracks, and now those goblins are surrounded, so it's pretty much, it's like Stalingrad for those goblins right now. Um, uh, when your heroes level up, which they gain through killing things, and um, that's pretty much the only way they can level up, they unlock powers. And as you, as you can see, Glorfindel is glowing red, and that's basically a power activated called uh, Blade of Purity. It basically gives him a huge damage boost. And um, Gloin has some very, uh, very effective powers, and much like the, uh, the player points, which you can use to spend on powers, there is also a cap on the level that a hero can reach in each level. So you can't get both your heroes, well all of your heroes, to the max level after one level. Um, that would be too easy. And it would kind of eliminate a sense of progression if you could just get everything on the first level. Um, where the hell am I looking over here? Let's move. Oh, I'm sending a waypoint. Now, we just got some Lorian archers. Now they're... They're effective archers, but the elves do get a lot better archers later on in the game. Um, they're quite close range for archers, but they do pack a punch, especially against goblins. And we've got 
I think I, I think I ordered too many Alorian warriors because they just they're coming in the thousands now. And uh, oh, here we go, here we go. We have more goblins attacking, but w our armies are huge now. They won't be able to uh, contend with that. Uh, we probably with the with the time limits that YouTube uh, implement on their videos, we won't be able to get through this entire first mission in this one video. But uh, it shouldn't take two, more than two videos to finish this level. As you can see there, uh, you can set hero powers on automatic by simply holding the A button on that power. And basically, the, the AI will know when to use the power when it suits them best. And as you can see, uh, Gloin just used it on a group of uh, goblins, and they went absolutely flying. Now we have mount th those tall-looking things on mountain giants. They're like the siege unit of the goblins. They're rather powerful. Now we have uh, cave trolls. Unfortunately, we don't have any units that are good against cave trolls. Uh, trolls and beasts of that nature are best eliminated with pikemen, and we don't get any pikemen on this level. Hey, completed an objective. Get going to level two. Uh, each hero can go up to ten levels. Uh, not all heroes are the same. They all have different powers. They all have a different number of powers. They all, ha even the speed, the rate at which they level up is different depending on the kind of hero. Hey, Arwen's here. Tied to the party as always. Um, now you may think of her as useless, and for the most part, <laughs> you'd be correct. But she did bring cavalry with her, and cavalry they do provide a different dynamic to the game. Uh, they have the ability to trample enemies, and they can deliver a great deal of damage uh, doing it that way. Now with Arwen's voice in distress, I think that calls for us to end the video here. So next time on the Battle for Middle Earth 2, we will be delving deeper into Rivendell and eliminating the goblin camp to the south. Now y you guys may think we're in trouble because goblins are crossing the bridge, but you'll just have to find out next time. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button, it does help a lot. Uh, just and go ahead and comment and subscribe. I'll be reading the comments to see what you guys thought, and I'll see you later.